Hello everyone, welcome back to another Toyota video. Today's video, we're gonna be updating you guys on the white Toyota pickup 3-4 swap. If you guys all know already, I'm doing a 3-4 swap for another person, his 1992, his 3.0 blue head gasket. So instead of doing a 3.0 repair, we're just gonna go ahead and trash that motor, and do a 3-4 swap. So what I've done so far is, as you guys all know, we're gonna go ahead and get the 3.4 engine prep first and then we'll start tearing that 3.0 out. So what I did today was I stripped the 3.4 motor. I went ahead and got all the heads removed and I'm looking at it right now. The only thing I haven't removed yet is the oil cooler and the oil pump, which I'll do last. But on that table, I have everything pretty much removed already. So it's July 3rd, 4th of July week. I just uh, found out that the machine shop that I've usually take all my parts to they're gonna be closed this whole entire week because they're doing inventory so I can't take those heads to them until next Monday but it's all good they're pretty fast with the turnaround so I'm pretty sure once I get it to them they can get it done in three days so once I get the heads done checked okay from the machine shop I'll go ahead and sit back down and make a list of all the parts that we need to order and we'll go ahead and get the parts on order while we're doing that then we will go ahead and start removing that 3.0 because there are some things that we need from that 3.0 we need the engine harness from the ECU to the power steering on that 3.0 we need the oil pan the oil dipstick the engine mounts off the 3.0 and some other things. So that's the process right now. So let me go ahead and just show you guys what I have here so far so you can guys can get an idea of what a 3.4 looks like or a teardown. One of the most important things when you're doing a 3.4 swap or any kind of engine work is to stay organized and stay clean. I cannot stress how important that is, guys. Stay organized and clean. Now, right now, we're a little bit dirty because we haven't cleaned up anything yet. Down there is the harness with the ECU. That's going to get sent out to John, who's our engine harness expert guru. He's going to do all that. We have the power steering, the valve cover. That's going to need a good cleaning, a good wash. We have all the lower, upper, middle intake that needs a full degrease, needs a full pressure wash. I take the time to brass Y wheel these. So some people don't do that. People don't take the time to clean this. I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to wire brush that, wire brush that, clean that. We're gonna clean the throttle body. <coughs> We're gonna clean the IAC, put new hoses. You have to take the time to do it right. So that's what we have here so far, guys. These are the cams for the driver side or passenger side. So I have them all covered up. And you have to make sure you keep everything organized, guys. You have all the cams organized. So the cams are all right here. Um, these are the spark plugs. Spark plugs looks to be in normal condition. Doesn't look too bad. They weren't using the correct one. So these are NGK. And we're going to put all new spark plug. NGK, BK, RE, Phi E, KB. I think those are the one I get. It's different. So these are the heads. That's the other cams. These are the head bolts. The head bolts are not reusable we're gonna go ahead and get a new one but keep in mind that you do want to keep the washer you guys see that washer we will be reusing the washer so that's one thing we're using those are all the valve cover gaskets or the valve cover bolts all that stuff's gonna get clean so last time when i did my three four swap on my red truck when i got the heads back from the machine shop they were so clean and they look very identical that i literally spent 15 minutes trying to decide which head was the driver's side and which head was the passenger side. So this time I made a good note of which is which. So this right here is the passenger side, which is the right hand side. One reason, the one way to tell from that is this is the front. This is the front of the engine, front passenger. This arrow always points towards the front. And also when I took off the manifold, all the studs came out. So the stud came out, so that's gonna make me know for sure that this is the passenger side. And on the driver's side, which is the left side, on the front, the arrow points down this way. And then also, two of the studs on the exhaust, they stayed on. So now I know for sure that, hey, driver's side has studs, and this side doesn't have any studs. So make sure you just do something to help you identify which is which because it's very hard to tell later on. Now I did notice that when you have them front facing, 
when both of them <coughs> are front facing you look at the back this is flush and this one is more curved but it's easy to get this mixed up if it was spun around if this was spun around you might think that this is the driver's side so just make sure you know which is which because sometimes it does get confusing after a long day a long month of overhauling an engine and again this is a donor engine from a 2000 forerunner five speed so i also forgot that the 2000 they used the new gasket so when i removed this one the gasket were the metal ones so the metal gaskets are right here still in really good condition the timing bill is completely toasted we're going to use a brand new timing kit overhaul we're going to get a new fan clutch <coughs> this one feels good still looks good but we're going to get a new one while we're there and the heads are still good. The block is still good. Knock sensors are in amazing shape. I look at the cross hatch. Cross hatch is good. So we're not going to do anything for the block. We're not going to rebuild the pistons or nothing like that. We're going to leave it the way it is. We're going to get rid of the oil cooler. Do the oil cooler delete. We're going to use the 3.0 oil pressure sending unit. So this is a 3.4. We're going to go ahead and trash that. We're going to go ahead and get a new oil pump. So we'll go ahead and remove this oil pump, save it for spare. It's probably still good, but it's just dirty. But we're just going to get a new one while we're at it. We're going to get a new front main seal. Nice thing about this rig is that it wasn't super leaking. There wasn't a lot of leaks. Now keep in mind that the 2000, anything that's 2000 and newer 3.4 engine, they don't have the dipstick hole. So right here is where you have to relocate the dipstick. So we're going to have to drill this block for the dipstick and we'll have to and we have to order a template they sell a template where you bolt it up and then you can drill it in so we're gonna do that it'll be my first time doing it that way because i never done it before all the three four swap i've done has been the older ones that has that hole already but other than that man the block surface looks good everything looks nice and we'll go ahead and start cleaning everything up Right now, we're just gonna go ahead and start cleaning things up. Once we get the heads in, heads back, we'll go ahead and start ordering new parts. I already have a Spear 3.0 oil pan and a 3.0 pickup too, so I have that already. So we can bolt that on if we need to. And then I'll just keep the one that's off of the truck. So it's always nice to have parts readily available. And then we'll go ahead and order a new knock sensor harness. The one I pulled out was completely rust, um, crispy. So that's very normal. We'll go ahead and do a rear main seal once this thing is off the engine mount, engine stand, and all that fun stuff. We're gonna put a new clutch, new flywheel, all that fun stuff. We're using a 3-4 flywheel, 3-4 clutch. Fun stuff, super simple. So everything looks really nice. The nice thing about these metal gasket is that the metal gasket doesn't leave a lot of debris. So this, all this stuff here is gonna scrape off really nice compared to the other type of gaskets. So really, really nice. And I don't know if I should go ahead, so let me know in the comments if I should, when I order my gaskets, should I go ahead and order the Toyota metal gaskets or should I order the O style gasket? So let me know which one should I go for. I'm pretty sure it won't matter, but I'm thinking I might go and stick with the metal ones just because the surface is all nice and our heads is gonna get resurfaced so everything will be nice. So let me know, let me know in the comment section uh, which head gasket should I go with. The old style one that's kind of like that little paper felt thingy or should I go with the new ones? Now I don't know what the price is for these metal ones, but the old gaskets, they're like a hundred bucks for both sides. So it's not too expensive. Hopefully, hopefully there's not a big price difference. That right there is gonna conclude this video. In the meantime, we're just gonna be cleaning up, organizing things. I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning every parts, get it organized, get it ready, so that when we get the heads back, we'll be ready to just slap it on. Now, once we get the heads back, we are gonna remove those pistons, uh, not the pistons, the valves. We will go ahead and remove those valves and put new valve seals and all that fun stuff. So lots of work, a lot of time, but it'll be, it'll be worth it in the long run. So for now, I'm not gonna film too much. I'm not gonna film myself cleaning parts. You guys should all know how to clean parts. I like to use super degreaser 
or purple powder, anything like that. I like to just soak it in that stuff for about a couple minutes. And then I like to use my pressure washer and just blast that stuff off. So if you don't have a pressure washer, you'll have to do more scrubbing, more muscle work. So definitely get yourself a pressure washer if you can, if you plan to do a lot of this stuff. So uh, like I said, guys, we'll go ahead and do some cleaning, clean, clean, organize, get all the parts organized set apart and then we'll start making a list of everything we need to replace we're going to replace all the seals anything that has a seal we're going to replace um i know for sure the fan clutch the oil pump we want to get new ones knock sensor harness fuel injector rebuild kits stuff like that new hoses new radiator hoses all that fun stuff we want to make sure this rig is good for another hundred thousand miles worry less all right guys so if you guys are um, interested in following the update you guys can follow me on the instagram i'll post more stuff on my instagram story like me cleaning stuff small stuff like that tips and stuff like that but for the meantime you guys probably won't see another three four video for another week or until we get the heads back once we get the heads back i'll go ahead and update you guys on what parts i'm getting so you guys have a general idea of what this cost is because a lot of you guys have been messaging me hey how much does it cost to do a three four swap well, it all comes down to how deep do you want to get into it. If you want to do it down dirty, it can be cheap. But if you want to do it the right way, the more better way, I guess you can call it, um, it, it just costs more. But again, in the long run, it's worth it. So catch you guys on the next video. Much love. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.